four alien objects. Two F-22 fighters. The U.S. versus China. U.S. Air Force genius method to shoot down Chinese spy balloons. Spy balloons are making a resurgence after China's invaded the U.S. successfully and somewhat easily. Impressed by the capabilities of the balloon, the U.S. is reportedly planning to spend more than $27 million on balloon projects in 2023 fiscal year. But not before two F-22 fighters, the world's most lethal fighters, were summoned to burn the invading Chinese balloon to the ground. This would have been the end of an international event that brought the United States, its people, and her allies to a suspense-filled standstill. But it wasn't. Days after the Chinese balloon was shot down, three unidentifiable high-altitude objects were spotted, and they too were considered threats to be shot down. In total, four alien high-altitude objects, including the Chinese balloon, had infiltrated deep into American airspace. That couldn't be good news for the U.S. These events would prove that American airspace has a loophole, one that balloons and other high-altitude objects could enter, quite literally. And considering that both China and Russia have been investing in these objects, there is a serious worry. A new type of war could be underway, another Cold War era. And it seems the U.S. may have been caught unaware, but not quite. Previously unknown to most, the U.S. has also been developing military-grade balloons. This has become news now, thanks to the series of events that began with the balloon from China. But some questions remain. Was it an intentional act from China? How did it come all the way from China? Is it even confirmed to be from China? These and many more will be answered now. News The saga of intrusion of the American airspace began late January when the U.S. spotted a 200-foot-tall balloon that entered U.S. airspace near Alaska, traveled over Canada, and then over inland U.S. The balloon was floating at about 60,000 feet, far higher than the usual 30,000-foot altitude of commercial planes. Steering clear of this altitude meant the balloon's flight didn't pose any threat to civilian flying. But being recognized as a Chinese balloon and reports that it was flying over sensitive areas, such as Montana, where over 100 silos of Minuteman II nuclear-capable missiles reside, gave credibility to arguments that it was a spy balloon and it should promptly be shot down. However, shooting down the balloon over land could pose some threats to people below it, for all anyone knew. Meanwhile, China issued a statement claiming it was indeed theirs, but was only a weather device that had gone extraordinarily astray. However true that claim, it was in the wrongest of places to be if it wanted to stay in the sky for long. After patiently waiting for the balloon to wander off the coast of South Carolina, and with the airspace surrounding the balloon closed from commercial activity, two F-22 Raptors took to the skies. Within minutes, one fired an AIM-9X air-to-air missile, popping the now-famous gigantic intercontinental balloon into nothingness. While the U.S. Navy worked to recover the debris, three other unidentified high-altitude objects were spotted in U.S. airspace. The reaction this time was instant, and all three faced the same fate as the balloon, which can be seen as the one that started it all. It was by far the largest, and probably the most advanced. To understand what threats this balloon could have posed, it is important to know what high-altitude balloons are and how relevant they are today. Balloons Dating back to the 1700s, balloons were one of the first mechanisms used in air warfare. Their role was originally mainly for reconnaissance purposes. They were an early instrument of definitive intelligence collection and were also particularly useful in the preparation of accurate battlefield maps. These balloons, known as surveillance or spy balloons, work quite simply. They are filled with gas, such as hydrogen or helium, that help them float with the wind. To put them less at the mercy of the wind and more under the control of a controller, 
Some balloons feature apparatus that can change a balloon's altitude to catch winds going in particular directions, while some others feature propellers, like the Intercontinental Balloon from China. For surveillance balloons to, well, surveil, they're fitted with sophisticated cameras and imaging technology, which they point at the ground to collect as much relevant information as they can on whatever is going on below it. The flight ceiling of surveillance balloons vary greatly. Some are tethered to the ground to prevent them from flying indefinitely, while others are inflated and released to fly as high as they can, reaching the 30 to 40,000 foot altitude range of commercial planes, and sometimes even beyond that. However high, though, balloons still generally operate thousands of feet below space, which gives them an edge against the device designed to replace them, satellites. Today, satellites are generally the preferred method of spying from overhead. They allow for some level of legal spying because they operate from a region that no country can claim as theirs, space. However, as said earlier, spy balloons have their advantages over satellites. These balloons are much closer to the ground than any satellites, so they can capture information even more clearly. In addition to these, they're cost-effective, versatile, easy to deploy, and easy to maintain. They do have one great weakness, though. Balloons are easy targets, as an F-22 recently displayed. This weakness, etched in stone as it is, could now be a thing of the past, as modern balloons are being developed to be less susceptible to takedowns, while retaining their literal down-to-earth level of surveillance and usefulness in other types of missions. Missions that see balloons could be armed with bombs for more active combat, armed with propaganda leaflets to ignite mass agitation, chafe to blind and confuse radars, or simply being used as decoys. Recognizing the potential, maximizing the capabilities of balloons has, for years, been a primary focus for world powers, such as the U.S., China, and Russia. U.S. Balloons were used by the U.S. military as far back as the American Civil War and as recently as the Cold War. Decades have since passed. Miniature electronics and sensors have been designed to perfection, Modern cameras can capture better-than-life photos, and improved material can be used to develop more durable balloons that can withstand a wider range of weather and atmospheric conditions. The U.S. government and private companies alike have been working to make the most of these technological advancements. Worldview Enterprises is one of those. Their modern balloons are large, having a volume the size of a college football stadium. Made of a polyethylene plastic, they do not create a heat signature and are hard to detect with radar, electro-optical, or infrared sensors. The balloons can loiter within a 40-kilometer area for four days, providing surveillance every second of each day. China The Chinese programs and corporations working on them aren't the most readily available information, but they do exist and they're making progress. Proof of this can be seen in the recent event over the U.S. airspace. The balloon that was recovered allegedly contained sensitive equipment that could be used to listen to Americans' communications and pinpoint the location of those talking on the ground. It was advanced and huge, comparable in size to a small passenger jet. And while China has dismissed allegations of espionage, instead claiming that the balloons are civilian craft for research, skepticism has remained. One reason being that at least three other Chinese balloons had entered U.S. airspace in recent years, which is a number too high to consider a coincidence. Russia Like the U.S., then Soviet Union, now Russia used balloons heavily during the Cold War. During that time, specifically 1956, the OKB-424 Design Bureau was established, tasked with making new military balloons and the likes. The first mission of OKB-424 was to copy a U.S. photo reconnaissance balloon that had come down on Soviet territory. Over the next 60 years, Moscow would produce around 20 types of free-floating balloon envelopes, with volumes ranging from 11,500 cubic feet to 21,190,000 cubic feet, each of which could carry various kinds of mission equipment. Fast forward to 2023, during the invasion of Ukraine, 
Russia would once again use balloons, complete with radar reflectors that help make the balloons effective decoys. The aim was to have Ukraine exhaust its air defenses. Such is the actual wartime versatility that comes with the use of balloons. Never mind the limitations. For Russia, China, and the US, it's all about overcoming them and finding a way to improve these balloons, then integrate them efficiently into their respective militaries. According to the reports, the versatility of balloons make it a possible task, but only if you subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. So do so now, and thanks for watching.